Today we have a pretty good comparison for you guys of some upcoming GPUs, NVIDIA's RTX 3060 and AMD's yet to be released 6700 XT. One of these I think will certainly be the one to get and I'm going to give you guys some pretty good reasons why. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology. Some say every time you smash that like button, a gamer out there somewhere gets their hands on a GPU at MSRP. All right, so the topic of today is the RTX 3060 versus AMD's upcoming 6700 XT. So let's give a little background info. The RTX 3060 has already been announced by Nvidia. It's supposed to be coming sometime, probably at the end of February, and it has an MSRP of $329. Now I say that, with almost a smirk on my face, but what does MSRP mean anyway? It's a suggested manufacturer price. So nobody's taking the suggestion that Nvidia is giving. I'm gonna tell you that much. This is gonna play into sort of what's going on with both of these GPUs. So the 3060, from what we know so far, there haven't been any you know benchmarks or anything like that, but we can make educated guesses as to where the performance will fall based on the specs of the other uh, release GPUs, such as the 3060 Ti. And of course, the big sticking point here is going to be 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Of course, this is the GDDR6, the regular VRAM, not the X variant that you're going to find in something like a 3080. But certainly seeing 12 gigabytes of VRAM had a lot of people scratching their heads on what is a lower end GPU. Even the 3060 Ti doesn't have 12 gigabytes of VRAM, not to mention the 3080 only having 10 gigabytes of VRAM. So one of the primary reasons for the 12 gigabyte of VRAM is going to be due to the competition from AMD and primarily the 6700 series that's supposedly going to be coming out fairly soon as well. That, of course, is rumored to have 12 gigabytes of VRAM, much like the higher-end 68 and 6900 series GPUs have 16 gigabytes of VRAM, therefore pretty handedly beating every NVIDIA card aside from the 3090 when it comes to at least the amount of VRAM. But, of course, the higher-end NVIDIA cards have the GDDR6X, and we have seen some games where that's really making a difference, especially with DLSS. So there is a lot to say for having less VRAM, but the faster variety, but that's a video for another day. And that's targeting primarily the 3080 and 3090 at this point. But just keep in mind, more VRAM doesn't always equate to better performance in gaming, but it's definitely a very strong sort of marketing play where a company can say, oh, look, we have the same amount of VRAM as the competitor or more VRAM. So I think it really ends up falling into that marketing category as well, especially for a GPU like a 3060, where it doesn't necessarily make as much sense as if it was on a higher end GPU. Now that we've done a little background information on these GPUs, let's compare them and let's see which one comes out ahead and which one should get your money when they're eventually released. First, let's talk about the issue of stock and availability. And this surely is going to be a sticking point for every single product release that comes out this year. Now, we can assume as the year goes on and the 3060's release that at least some gamers will get their hands on this GPU. After all, the 3060 Ti and the 3070 are more mass-produced GPUs compared to something like a 3080 even though ironically the 3090 seems to be the one that restocks the most if you guys are checking Newegg and Micro Center I've seen them in stock a lot more than everything else 3080 is definitely the much rarer GPU at this point I think that's probably due to the 3090's price and not really being that great value over the 3080 and the 3070 3060 Ti they're just priced better, cheaper, and they're still very high performing GPUs. Now, it's really difficult to say how stock and availability will be like of the 3060, but we can hope that they can at least sort of focus their manufacturing and production to get these GPUs out. After all, some GPUs like the 3080 Ti seem to be postponed for now, so maybe they're focusing on producing already announced GPUs, and that would be great not only for Nvidia, but also for AMD. The 6700, of course, is not really official yet, but we definitely expect it to come and if the stock of the 6800 and 6900 are any indication certainly you can expect it to be a very difficult to find gpu probably even more than nvidia at this point amd stock and availability has not been as much as nvidia and nvidia has been very limited stock so that's definitely saying something so if we have to sort of have an educated guess as to which one is going to be more available i would say you probably have an easier time getting the 3060 but it doesn't necessarily mean you should get 
that one over the 6700. So let's talk about some performance numbers. Of course, a key sticking point to the 3060 is going to be that 12 GBs of VRAM. Now, we're also expecting the 6700 to have 12 gigabytes of VRAM as well, and they're both likely to have just the regular garden variety GDDR6, not the X variant, so we can assume they're going to be fairly equal in terms of VRAM. But I think that's most likely where the comparison will stop. I believe the 6700, judging from all of the other GPUs and sort of the hierarchy that both companies have, most likely and traditional rasterization should perform better than the 3060. In fact, it may perform better or be close to even the 3060 Ti. And I'm drawing this conclusion from the fact that if you look at the base 6800, it outperforms the 3070 in terms of traditional rasterization. Of course, ray tracing and DLSS for now are technologies that NVIDIA definitely has the upper hand in. But if you compare in a traditional game, a 6800 versus a 3070, in many cases, if not most cases, the 6800 will come out a decent amount ahead. So we can expect the 6700 likewise, most likely to slot somewhere in the 3060 Ti and the existing 3070. In some cases, it may even be as fast as a 3070. So we're certainly talking about a GPU here that really isn't necessarily comparable to a 3060. I think it's going to be more in that upper level. Of course, AMD may eventually release maybe a lower end SKU than the 6700 that may be closer to the 3060. But regardless, I think many gamers will be looking at the 6700 versus even something like a 3060, a 3060 Ti, and they're going to have to draw some type of conclusion depending on which one they can find in stock. And for the most part, if performance is your metric, I'm pretty confident in saying that the 6700 should win out over the 3060. Now, one thing that we have to mention here is going to be ray tracing and DLSS performance. Now, in terms of ray tracing, when it comes to the higher end GPUs, personally, I really like it in games. Like when I'm playing Cyberpunk 2077, having the ability to have ray tracing together with DLSS, for me anyway, is a pretty big deal. That's why if I'm playing a high end game at 4K, I personally prefer to use something like a 3080 or a 3090, because that way I'm getting all the eye candy with ray tracing and DLSS for the most part is helping to keep things at pretty respectable frame rates. So at the high end GPU, I think ray tracing is a lot more important, but as you start to step down to something like a 3060 or even a 6700, ray tracing becomes a little bit less important in my opinion. My reason for this is that ray tracing is already very, very taxing even on a high-end GPU like a 3090. So when you try to put something like a 3060 to have ray tracing capabilities, you're going to have a lot worse frames per second performance on a lower-end GPU like that, especially if you're trying to play at like 1440p or something like that. In those cases, I would probably prefer to leave ray tracing off and just play it in a traditional style And that's where I think the 6700 would be superior in that case to the 3060 as we know the AMD GPUs in some games like cyberpunk ray tracing isn't even available and in the titles that ray tracing is available for both AMD and Nvidia Nvidia has a pretty remarkable lead at this point of course They've definitely had a head start in the technology and remember ray tracing isn't something that's specific to Nvidia AMD will also be able to do its own versions of ray tracing. It's just something that Nvidia has been polishing for a lot longer than AMD has, and the lead kind of shows up in a lot of these games that are more optimized for it. And then of course, even if ray tracing isn't your primary interest, there's still DLSS, which is definitely proving to be a very good technology. Basically what it does, it's like a deep learning system as you play the game. It gives you the best frames per second performance while trying to keep the graphical fidelity a little bit higher than you otherwise would have if you had to pretty much lower all of the settings. And now let's talk about pricing. Of course, pricing has been changing rather dramatically recently with the exemption on tariffs expiring at the beginning of 2021. Therefore, everything has jumped through the roof and you really can't take traditional MSRP prices at their sort of presented value anymore, especially from third party AIB partners. Those have been the ones that have gone up the most. So when we're looking at a 6700 versus a 3060, which has a stated MSRP of $329, you can pretty much know for a fact that the 6700 will be a more expensive GPU. Most likely they're not going to be anywhere near the same level in terms of pricing. I would expect something like a 6700 to be priced really between the 3060 Ti and the 3070. So in conclusion, which GPU should you get? Well, if these were regular times and these GPUs were readily in stock at really fair MSRPs, I would probably tell you it may make sense to go for the 6700. You're going to get better rasterization performance and most likely 
at maybe traditional MSRP, the price gap wouldn't be all that huge. Maybe the 3060 Ti, you could also consider throw that in there. But since we have very peculiar set of scenarios that can happen now if you're looking for a GPU, first, I would say it's really going to depend on stock. Who knows? Maybe the 3060 will be more available than everything that's come before it. Maybe the 6700 may have a little bit better stock. So it's going to depend in the situation that we're in now, which one you can find a little bit easier. But it could be that since AMD GPUs have been harder to find in general, their prices also maybe have gone up a little bit more than we would like to see and leaving maybe a more mass produced 3060 more readily available, therefore meaning that you may be able to find it at a better price. And if you want to have some version of ray tracing as well as some DLSS performance, not exactly as much as the higher end GPUs, but at least some to get you going on 1080p and maybe even 1440p, the 3060 and with the 12 gigabytes of VRAM, which doesn't really matter too much for gamers, not at least at this level. And one GPU that you really have to consider, and I personally feel it's the better gaming GPU, much better than the 3060. You have to kind of ignore the 12 gigabytes of VRAM. I think that's more just to compete with AMD. Gamers really are not going to be able to take advantage of that. While the traditional performance of a 3060 Ti, gamers will be able to take advantage of that. So I would say, even though we compared the 3060 versus a 6700, there's an obvious gap in performance and price there. That's because these are the two newest upcoming GPUs. But if we look at what's out now, of course, a 3060 Ti may actually be the Goldilocks, the perfect GPU to slot in right between these two GPUs. It's going to be in between them in price and also in performance. And of course, like I said, forget about the 12 gigabytes of VRAM. I really don't think that's a very significant factor at this point. That's something that we have to look at for much higher end GPUs. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you're planning to do down below. If you're looking at these different two to three GPUs that I mentioned, remember to smash that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next video.